Here we have the T8 CNC and I was surprised to see that it didn't arrive in a larger box, the insufficient packing did scratch the stepper motors but nothing that affected the performance. The main spindle motor is a 24 volt brushed DC motor and it features a full aluminium frame that is extremely sturdy with lead screws and stainless steel rods. The mounting plates did have some quite noticeable markings but nothing that affected the assembly. It uses an Arduino Uno with a CNC shield on top and a relay module to control the 24 volt motor which does have its own AC brick that did arrive with an adapter for us European guys. There is also a 12 volt adapter for the shield that controls the stepper motors. Everything else was nicely sorted in Ziploc bags and with that being said, let's get started with the assembly. Before we start, here is what everyone wants to know, how much does it actually cost? It's currently at $200 plus another $12 for shipping. Now let's get started. The first step was to assemble the aluminium frame using the steel corner brackets with bolts and T-nuts. It quickly took shape. I then mounted all the end plates and built the C and X axis construction that will be holding the C motor and the main spindle motor. I also mounted the Y-axis bed in the same fashion. I mounted all stepper motors accordingly and inserted the lead screws. Once all the motors was in place, it was time for the good stuff, aka electronics. The wiring was very easy and I do like the fact that they include adapters instead of an open power supply. It just makes it more safe not working with electric power straight from the outlet. However, if you do need help, I will post full instructions of the entire build on my website. The only soldering I had to do was for the connectors, but hey, they do even include some DC jack adapters. So if you don't want to solder, you don't have to. And just like that, the assembly and the electronics is complete. Wow, that sure was one of the easiest builds I have ever done. Alright, I connected the power to each input, but here is where I encountered my first problem and the issue was to lock thick objects to the bed. In order to cut out material, it has to be locked against the bed, especially if you are going to cut down quite deep into the wood. Whenever I would start the CNC, the vibrations and pushing power would knock off the object. Even using a small vise didn't help either. Surely enough, it got knocked off right away. The solution that worked great without any modifications was to move the locking screws to the middle of the part. And rather than locking them vertically, I put them in an angle, pushing two against one another on each side. Awesome, now let's finally engrave something. I brought my laptop to the table and plugged in the USB cable, downloaded a software called Text Milling, wrote whatever I would like to engrave, modified a couple of properties, the most important setting for success is to click the mirror Y checkbox, otherwise the engraving will be mirrored incorrectly. Go to the tab called parameters in order to change depth and engraving speed. I used a depth of negative uh, six millimeters, but later found this wasn't quite enough. But once I was happy with the settings, I created the G code file and started a second software called GRBL controller. I changed the COM port to number 4, you have to change the baud rate to 115200, otherwise it won't connect. Click open and choose the file we created using text milling, click begin and watch the magic happen. I removed the wooden piece from the bed and used a vacuum cleaner to remove the powder stuck in between the letters. If I would have increased the depth making the tool cut deeper into the wood, it would have been a lot easier to remove the powder and the letters would have been more apparent. However, using some oil really made it look quite nice. I swapped the cutting tool to a rounded grinder. This tool was not included in the kit but can be used to engrave acrylic or even metal. This is not aluminium but actually a hard steel plate. The result was decent but not great. Aluminium would probably have worked better. Using two pieces of 6mm foam stacked to each other and increasing the cutting depth made me able to cut completely through, resulting in a perfect ellipse. This was also possible using acrylic. A 
it's a great affordable tool to have in your workshop and I think there is potential to make some really quite cool things. Comment below some ideas of uh, what one might do with this machine and uh, check it out. There is a link in the description below uh, and pick one up because I will use it in future videos. Have a nice day. Bye.